Over the course of our lives, we have many dreams and desires, but we can waste a lot of time if we pursue a path God did not ordain for us. Today on Excellent Living, Cheryl Martin outlines key principles for embracing your dreams so they will be fulfilled. Last time, she told us the importance of seeking God first. Hannah in the Bible did this, and God granted her request and fulfilled her dream of having a son. Let's listen as Cheryl concludes this teaching. When we have spent time developing that intimate relationship with God, He promises. He says, when you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. We will not only hear from God, His hand will be upon us. Ezra 8.22 says, the hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek Him. So we've got to seek Him. And He will answer. When I wanted to go to the, one of the best universities for broadcasting, and we prayed, and we didn't have the money, but we spent time, and my mother is a great prayer warrior, just laying it before God. And when I got admitted into Northwestern, I had so much money that it would have cost me more to stay at home and go to the local university. We saw God work because of prayer. So we not only seek God, number two, we say yes to God. Say yes to God. Whatever that entails, whether it's our career, our dating, how we spend our money, where we go, you name it. In other words, Lord, I surrender. See, we can't segment our lives and say, well, God, I'll say yes to you here, but I'll take care of this. In order to really embrace our dreams, in order to see those dreams, that God has placed in our heart be fulfilled, we must say yes to his agenda. And a lot of times his agenda is going to look different than our desires. That's why we must take our dreams and run them through the filter, offer them up to God. Sometimes his dream is even bigger than our dream. When we say yes to God, we're saying, God, I want your will more than I want my way. And I don't know about you, but I can be a very strong-willed person. So I have to pray this way on a regular basis, trying to condition my mind to always be open to another point of view, to God telling me to go left and I wanted to go right. So I don't say yes, but I know what the Word of God says, but. An attitude that says, whatever you say, Lord. Why? Because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. When I finished graduate school, I didn't want to moved to Washington. That was not my desire. It was a desire of a lot of my colleagues. But when I got hired by NBC, they placed me in Washington, and I've been there ever since. That was God's plan for me. I stress say yes to God because I believe that women, maybe more so than men, can be guilty of having our own agenda. We try to work our plan. Get God to ditto our plan, and then we confuse what we want with what God wants. We can believe our agenda so strongly that the next thing you know, we've heard a voice from God. It was what we wanted. I have witnessed this in my own life. The very first guy that I just knew this had to be God's will. Why? Because I wanted him. 
I told myself he had to be my package because he fit everything on my superficial list. So I began to get busy to make sure our paths crossed. And while we dated for a few weeks, when we broke up, I refused to accept that. It's a trick of the enemy. It's the devil trying to block my blessing. I've learned some things. That if something is of God, he's going to speak to that person as well. I won't be the only person to get the memo. I know he's mine and he doesn't like you. That's not how God works. Trust me. So I know about that. That we can believe something until we can almost become delusional. At times. Really. Because we have already set our agenda, we must always have an open mind to what God is going to do. In other words, God, this is my desire, but I'm not going to tell you how to work it out. My example of a person saying yes to God, having a say yes attitude, Mary the mother of Jesus. Here she was planning her wedding, looking forward to it, and what happened? Woke up one morning, going her way, and an angel appeared. Guess what, Mary? You've been highly favored of God, and this is your assignment. She didn't say, "Uh uh-uh. That messes up my plans. You know, how am I going to explain this? She simply said, how will this be? And I love her response. In Luke 1, 38, she said, after the angel told her that nothing is impossible with God, she said, according to your will, O God, be it unto me. I'll say, yes, this was not my plan for my life, but I've heard from God. I say yes in every area. A woman who has had that intimate relationship with God, you didn't get the job you wanted, but you're able to say, you know what, God? You're sovereign. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm going to be better. You have something else for me. Why? Because Psalm 8411 says, you will withhold no good thing from those who walk upright. I thought he was my good thing, but he kept walking, so. (laughs) I guess he's not mine. See how that say yes attitude? Lord, I say yes to your path for me, your script, I wanted all my children to be perfect. They're not. So apparently you have another script. I haven't had children yet, been married. You can go on and on. Lord, I say yes to you. His plan is always bigger and better than we ever imagined. So we seek him, we say yes to him, and finally, we serve him. We serve him where we are right now. See, some of us are waiting for that big assignment. You're more intelligent than your boss. You deserve more money. So when you get that big assignment, then you'll put in the hours. Because they don't pay you enough right now. 
but a woman who wants to embrace her dreams says, where I am right now, I'm going to give it all I've got. Then some of us may look at ourselves and say, well, how could God use me? I'm too afraid to share with someone else my dream. They may laugh because they don't think my dream will come true. I don't have any special talents or skills or education. Plus, look at my past. Let me assure you, if you have committed your life to Christ and you are a Christ follower, God has a place where you can serve right now. You can serve him right now. 1 Corinthians 12, 5, and 6 says, There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men or women. So what does this mean? You may not have an out front position, let's say, in the church as a singer or, singer or speaker, but your job is vital, your role is vital within the body of Christ because it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 18, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. So that means when each of us as women is content to play our specific role we're going to accomplish God's purposes. And the body of Christ is going to work very smoothly. But typically what happens is we look over and want someone else's position. I know that for this conference there were many assignments. Some have been working diligently preparing the food. They're not in here. But if they didn't do their job, we wouldn't have anything to eat tomorrow. Someone was responsible for publicity, transportation, all needing in order to bring a program together, people serving where they are gifted. What do you think if in our own body, our bodies function perfectly. What if the heart said, you know what? I am sick and tired of not being seen. <laughs> I'm sick of it. All I have to do is stop beating. They always brag on the face. She's always looking in the mirror. No one sees me except the surgeons. I'm tired. She's always going to the hairdresser getting her hair done. No one acknowledges me. So, oh, she's got such a pretty face. They don't look at me. I quit. I'm not getting attention. They don't call my name. So you know what? I'm going on strike, and we'll see how long she survives. <laughs> what if the heart did that? We don't see it. We never talk about it. But let it stop beating. What if the lungs, kidney, we don't see them, but they are so vital. You don't see jealousy within our body. Each one content to fulfill the purpose for which God created. If each one of us in this room left saying, I'm going to focus on one thing, 
fulfilling the purpose, and I can applaud someone who's the face. It takes nothing away from me being the heart, being the lungs, being the stomach. Take nothing, because we're all needed. And if one is separated, the body would not function properly. So what's your assignment? What is God called you to do today? Because you know what I've discovered? When we focus on doing the very best job with the assignment we have been given today, that is going to put us right in line for that dream coming forth. Not being jealous of someone else who's in that position, but doing the job that we've been given today. That's what Ecclesiastes says, whatever your hand, in Ecclesiastes 9.10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the grave where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Author Betty Carlson says, happiness is discovering that the best way to serve God is to do the small, ordinary task right at hand or around the corner and trust the Lord that he can hold his own in faraway places. I remember when I got hired by NBC and they placed me at the Washington station, the news director, I got hired as a producer to work with uh, the main political reporter, and I'd wanted to be a reporter, and the news director made it very clear. He says, don't expect to go on camera here as a reporter because I'd just gotten out of school, and that was unheard of. And I said, fine, no problem. He made it very clear. Don't even think about it. I was paid to be a producer, and you know what I did? I purposed in my heart, I'm here to do the best as her assistant as possible. And we were covering the political campaign that year, and we were traveling, and I just took joy in working alongside of her. But do you know what happened? Because I was focused on doing my job, which was to make her look good. I wasn't trying to undermine her or work my gig on the side. She came to me and said, Cheryl, while we're out here on the political trail, why don't you put some stories together? I'm going to let you use my cameraman, my photographer. You can do your stand-ups, and I want you to write your stories. You can use my video. And I did three stories, and I sent them to the executives in New York. And what happened, they then told the news director in Washington to put me on the air as a reporter. I, I wasn't undermining her, upset because I wasn't doing what I really wanted to do. I was just focusing, because most people, when you help them get where they want to go, God will send someone along to help you with your dreams. But when I'm working with people who think they know more than I know and think they deserve to be where I am, it's not much of an incentive to help them. So when we serve, if you're oozing with talent, God will see it. If you just have that IQ, believe me, with an attitude of humility, if there is a dream that needs to be birthed, God will make sure it's done. When we do it 
his way. So what has God called you to do today? Today. You may have a dream to have your own daycare franchise, your own business, and you're not sure how it's going to work out, but what has he called you to do this day? If we can do it without murmuring and complaining, and saying, Lord, I thank you that I have a job. I'm going to do it excellently. There was a friend of mine who wanted a job in television, and do you know she was working at the Ann Taylor shop next to the CBS Bureau in Washington, and because she did her job so excellently, some of her clients were the executives, women executives at CBS. She had a degree in Russian, so she spoke Russian. Now here she is selling clothes at Ann Taylor. But because she did that well, they hired her. As opposed to when she was a Dartmouth graduate, Ivy League graduate, who loved God. You don't see, we don't know which route. It's very different. I heard Chuck Swindoll say just this week, God's calling on each one of us is unique and personal. So the way he opened a door for Susie may not be the way he opens it for you. You can be standing in the checkout line, just friendly, strike up a conversation. And you're talking to a millionaire who just liked you. Because God told them to like you. So when we have developed that intimacy with God, we know we're not going to miss anything. Because, Lord, we're tight. I know you. You know me. I know your voice. I have a say yes attitude. I'm I'm right on your team, whatever you tell me to do, and I'm serving you with all my might. You can't tell me your dreams will not be achieved. A French expression, and I will close with this, says the authentic Christian does not seek to do extraordinary things, but to do extraordinarily well the ordinary. The ordinary thing. Right before Jesus went to the cross, he said to his father in John 17, 4, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. Not the work that he wanted to do. Not what other people expected of him. I've thought about that. When we stand before God, are we able to say, Lord, I have completed the work that you gave me to do? I believe we can answer in the affirmative when we meet our Savior if we spend time seeking him, saying yes to him, and then serving him. Thanks so much, Cheryl, for telling us what gets God's attention when we want him to fulfill our dreams and desires. Cheryl will be back with a closing prayer. But first, if you want to listen to this teaching again or pass it on to a friend, it's available on a single CD for $9 when you visit our website, excellentliving.org. That's excellentliving.org and click on resources. If you prefer to pay by check, you can mail it to Excellent Living, Post Office Box 15285, Chevy Chase, Maryland 20825. That's P.O. Box 15285, Chevy Chase, Maryland 20825. Shipping is free on all orders. 
we invite you to sign up for our free quarterly online newsletter on our homepage. The articles will encourage you in your quest to do life God's way. You can show your support of this broadcast by becoming a partner when you give regularly. Just click the Donate Now button on the homepage when you visit excellentliving.org. Now, let's join Cheryl Martin for a closing prayer. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that you have given us as your women big dreams. Dreams that you have placed in our hearts, no matter what stage of life we're in. But Lord, I pray that we would first of all humble ourselves before you and say the most important thing in life is to seek you first and to spend quality time getting to know you on an intimate level. And then when you speak to us in your word that we will obey and have that say yes attitude and then serve you wherever you have placed us. May our hearts be drawn to you tonight, and may we leave this place with that desire, Lord, to trust you with all of our hearts. I pray this in your matchless name. Amen. I'm Doris McMillan, inviting you to tune in again next time for Excellent Living with Cheryl Martin.